We live in a day to day where children feel privileged and privileged that you are supposed to leave something for them. You're supposed to give them something. But the greatest inheritance we can leave for our children is financial literacy, a good work ethic, intelligence, education, commitment, dedication, loyalty, and the drive to want to get up and work hard and work smart. You know, because yes. we live in this age today where every, the whole thing is you got to work smart and not hard. But our Bible tells us faith without works is dead. Yes. So therefore, that even in working smart, you have to have a competency and a drive yes. to exercise your brain to stay in there for long term gain and, and long term success. Greetings, families, friends, and well-wishers. Welcome back to Conversations Beyond the Pulpit, the podcast where we delve into the depths of human experiences through the lens of faith. As always, I'm your host, Bishop Joseph Roberts, Jr., joined by my wonderful and beautiful co-host, Pastor-elect Lady Michelle Roberts. Today, guys, we have another exciting episode. We're going to talk about conversations with finances, diving into the crucial aspects of how lack of financial literacy, lack of planning, lack of having adequate life insurance can really impact our future, our current situations. So I'm really excited today to talk about this complex matter. I'm asking that you would just open yourself up to it because we all know Death is inevitable. We all know we have to plan for our future. We all know that we have to secure the fam, our future for our family and loved ones. The Bible says a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And sometime not planning adequately does not give us the opportunity to leave that inheritance. So with my lovely co-host today, we're going to jump right into this. I'm excited about it. Some of the things we live for. And people always say to me, dear, you know, we just couldn't afford to have life insurance. I'm going to double down and say we cannot afford not to have life insurance. So with that being said, to my lovely co-host. So this may not be the glamorous of most subjects, but it's absolutely vital to your well-being, your security yes. of your family. And as Christians, we believe that the respons- is res- it's our responsibility to be a good steward of our resources, not only wise, but also as a reflection of our faith. Life insurance also isn't just about death. With the right life insurance policy, it can also help you through your life through hard situations. So life insurance is, it's more than just about death, but it is important to have to cover your family in the case of death. With all that being said, let's jump right into it today, guys, if you don't mind. So let's talk about the importance of financial literacy. Um, And I'm going to deal with us as a African-American culture of people Um, I like to say, a black people in America. You know, coming from an urban society, growing up in Camden, New Jersey, we were not taught financial literacy in school. Uh, We didn't have teachers that took the time to explain to us what a 401k was, Mm -hmm. the difference between whole life insurance, term life insurance. We didn't learn how to balance a checkbook in school. Um, for us, I was fortunate enough, we were fortunate enough to have parents that had some financial literacy and competency in it. So growing up, I remember working for my dad, my first employer at five years old. He would take us to what was called People's Bank. And I I always loved the name of that bank, People's Bank, because it was where people would come in. And back then, you had your you know, your your bank book and you deposited your $10, they stamped it in there and you took away and you could see the tangible, not like today where everything's online. And, And so we began to learn financial literacy 
through our parents, um, them being business owners, having a ledger, looking at balance sheets. But then, you know, what was always talked about in our house was life insurance. Did we have enough life insurance? You know, my mother worked at one point and then she was disabled. So it was at the forefront of my dad's mind. You know, if I lost my job, if the business went under, was there enough life insurance or if he died? to cover the family, to be able to sustain these different things. So with that being said, you know, understanding just the terminology is a good part of financial literacy. Understanding, you know, what risk management is, risk tolerance is, because a lot of times we get into marriages and we have two different palettes or appetites concerning spending and money. So I yes. say that for a reason because, you know, most of the time people just look at money as being wealthy. But there's other things. You know, people have assets, you mm -hmm. know, real estate. They have 401K plans. Yes. They have CDs. They have, you know, revolving in investment programs. So looking at that, and I might be going in a little bit too deep too early, but this is just part of financial literacy, understanding what it means and what it is. Um, so the one thing I'm going to touch on being a student athlete, first thing I was exposed to, well, first was people's bank and banking. Mm -hmm. Second thing I was exposed to was life insurance. Um, coming into high school, 14, 15, start being scouted by professional coaches and boxing promoters. And Mr. Roger, who was uh, my dad's insurance man, said, well, if you're going to look at sports and especially at combat sports, we need to make sure you have the right insurance plans. So my parents had insurance on me. So Mr. Roger set me down at 14 years old and talked to me about term life insurance and whole life insurance. And at that age, um, being young, you would probably think, a term life insurance would be better for me because it was a lot cheaper. Um, and what it, term life is for the term that you sign up for the insurance. So you could do a 10-year term life insurance, 20 years. I was young, so 40 years is what he, what he uh, showed to me. Uh, I wound up going with a whole life insurance plan. Uh, being young, understanding I had a job at 14 already, I could afford to pay the $40 a month premium. But when I looked at the whole life insurance, and I'm not telling you one is better than the other because you have to do what's best for you and your family. But when I looked at the whole life insurance policy, and it was with Prudential, Prudential had some good investment strategies. But knowing the relationship my dad had with his insurance broker, who was now becoming my broker, they met every Monday. And they would sit there Every Monday, talk about my dad's finances, his estate planning, but they took it one step further. At the end of the month, they would look at the dividends and how the investment was going. And so every month, my dad would have an opportunity to change his investment strategy. So for me, I was learning financial literacy at a, at a young age. And to this day, I still have that whole life insurance policy. Um, I still manage it that way. I still, my wife and I look at it monthly. We look mm -hmm. at the ebb and flows of the investments, the volatility of diversifying stocks from one to the other. Um, and looking at that whole life insurance as an investment portfolio in addition to other things and, and making sure the mix is right. So it's a whole life insurance, making sure that we have some stock in tech, making sure we have some in mutual funds. And these are languages that we have to learn in, mm -hmm. in our urban culture, in our black America society. And we have to teach it to our kids at a young age. I would say to all parents today, you know, Gerber Life Insurance, you know, the Gerber Food Company, they have a Gerber Global. It's a life insurance that you can get for your children. It's not expensive. It's a policy in case something goes wrong. Um, being pastors, we do a lot of homegoing services, as we call them, or funerals. And this is not being 
degrading. But it breaks my heart when we have families of all different ethnicities. They come in and rather it's a congregant or somebody wanting to use the church or asking us, would we do their their loved one's funeral service? And we have to push the date back because they have to raise the money for the homegoing service. And one of the things I will say about life insurance is securing your family from that financial strain in the case of an untimely death. But then, you know, with whole life insurance, you know, there is a wellness side to that as well. So when you have parents that need to go into long-term care, there is a line item there that you can use that money to help extend and provide better daycare and help with the facilities. So again, I'm not telling you whole is better than term life insurance. It's all about your budget, but you need to have some type of life insurance as you plan for the security of your family and, and your future. So that has to be part of your financial plan. Yes. Dear. And as you can see, you know, the bishop, that's, that's a topic he really loves to talk about, but it's a topic that's necessary to talk about. Unlike him, I did have, being young, um, I had a mother that was into accounting, and she was a teacher. Yeah. So she taught me at a young age about banking. She taught me how to go to the bank to deposit money. She taught me how to write checks. She taught me about savings accounts. And then switching high schools, I started at one high school, then I switched to a tech school. And at the tech school, they had a different type of math. I forget the exact name of this math class, but in this math class, at 16, I learned about 401k plans. I learned about checking. I, I learned about stocks and bonds. We learned everything in this math class that was to do with life, life insurance, having insurance on certain things. I mean, it's a lot of you out there now that have businesses you need business insurance. Yes, you may have life insurance. You may have insurance on your home. You may be doing your business out of your home, but that's not the same kind of insurance. If you're doing business and somebody decides to sue you because they didn't like something you did in your business, your home insurance, your life insurance will not cover you for that. That will come out of your pocket. So you have to think about that also. Yes. You have to get business insurance for your business, even if your business is your house. Even if you are your business, that's a different type of insurance. You have to yes. insure it. So that's like when he was talking about boxing. Yes, that's a different type of insurance. His, his business was boxing, so he had to insure it. Yes. Because that was solely, totally something different. And not only is there whole life and term life, there's accidental insurance that you can get. And that's if, you know, you're somebody that's traveling on the time, you're on the road, and yes. something happens accidentally, that, that will cover that. It will mm -hmm. cover it. It's so many. And, yes, he talked about Gerber life insurance. I've had Gerber life insurance on my children since they were born. Yes. I still have those policies on them. Most of them are married. They have wives, but I don't care. I still have that policy. You know, they have children. That yes. policy can help their children. You know, God forbid if anything ever happened to them. It's, I keep it because it's, it's my safety net in case something's happened to them and they say, Mom or Dad, well, we haven't been paying our insurance. It slipped our mind or yes. something like that. But my kids know I harp on them. I talk to them about that. I'd be like, you got life insurance? They'd be like, yeah, mom. Yeah. That's exactly how they say it to me. Your life insurance good? Yeah, yes. mom. And they look at me like, I really don't want to talk about this right now, but we're going to talk about it. It's important. Because <laughs> it's important. Because <laughs> if you got a wife, you don't want to burden your wife with mm -hmm. your expenses or whatever that's left. After you pass or, or God forbid, you get sick and get bedridden is so it's so you don't become a burden and you don't have to do, you know, OK, you can't afford a fifty thousand dollar policy. You should be able to afford ten thousand dollar policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, sh you should. You just should have something to take that burden away yes. at all times. And um, so I can't my, my mother taught me the need to have life insurance. Stocks and bonds. Stocks and bonds. She still got stocks and bonds for us mm -hmm. that she still got. 
And she always let me know, don't worry, I still got your stocks and bonds. They put up. I say, okay, mom. Like my kids say okay to me. I say it to my mom. But but it's it, it's funny, but it's not funny. It's it's just it's a serious thing. It will help. I mean, at one point we had a hard time. We talked about that in a different podcast where we was both out of work. So yes, we had to borrow money from our life insurance policy. And yes, low interest rate on yeah, repayment. Low interest rate. Cheaper than taking a loan from the bank. Sure enough, is we were able to pay it back. Pay it and back, and it goes right back into your insurance. And mm-hmm. if you can't afford to pay it back when you pass, they will deduct it from your insurance. Just know that. <laughs> so, but still, it's so it's it's there for a purpose mm-hmm. and it's there for a need. It does. It helps your family. No matter what, if you have a loved one, your mother, you know, she can't afford to get life insurance, get a small policy on them, get a small policy on them, cover them because they need it. I mean, they may say, who is this person you getting it for? And you can say it's for my mom. Yes. It's for my aunt. You are allowed to insure them if they have no insurance. But Mm -hmm. it's 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 important. It's needed, especially I'm sorry, especially in our black culture. Like he said, it's many people where people have passed and they don't of all ethnicities, but a lot of our black people don't get insurance. You need life insurance. You you think that's only a rich people thing. It's not a rich people thing. It's a wise Technically it's a thing. yes, it's a, it's wise, a wise people, people thing. thing. So you, you need insurance. We so, can't express that. <laughs> I'm gonna shift our focus. Amen. <laughs> we, we 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 got our preface out. You can feel our passion hear us um, in our plight to implore everyone to have insurance. But let's shift our focus into planning for the future. Um, There are some very practical steps in planning for your future. And Mm -hmm. it's the first thing I tell people when planning for your future, assess where you're at today. And, Mm -hmm. And assessing where you're at today is, again, we look at, being rich by having green $1 bills. Um, but there are so many things that we buy today that appreciate in value that we don't realize. Um, we look at our wedding rings. We look at the watches we we wear. Um, and sometimes we don't take the time to just go back to the jeweler you bought these things from and look at the appreciated value on it. Mm-hmm. And so I believe... When you're planning for the future, it's being able to properly, through financial literacy, assess what you already have. Um, And in assessing what you have, it helps you plan for where you're trying to go. Um, I say that in, in all fairness and honesty, you know, learning what it means to have a balance sheet. And in that balance sheet, what is your net worth? Everything you've spent has a value to it. What is my couch worth? What is my TV TV worth? What is the, the desk in my office worth? Because when you begin to, as my wife was saying, if you're an entrepreneur or somebody working out of your house, if you get business insurance, they're going to ask you the value of your business. And so you have to do an assessment to be able to give them the value of what you want them to insure. And when you begin to understand that you're not as broke as you think you are or that you have accomplished more in life than you may think you have because you might not have what others have in mm-hmm. in, in surface value things, but you have it in the tangibles. When I say surface value, I mean, you might not have the my back. You might not have the Rolls Royce, the things that the elitists have. But you have accomplished some good things for your age and the time and the hand you've been dealt. So, again, not cutting corners is important to planning for your future. There are some things I tell everybody when you're dealing with financial literacy, if you have not been trained, if you don't come from a family that taught it to you, invest in yourself. Get yourself with a network of people or in some type of focus group that can teach you the difference between a mutual fund, a stock, Mm -hmm. that can teach you between the Fortune 100, the Fortune 500, that can teach you what type of investor you are or what type of planner you are. Um, Mm -hmm. 
And I find in marriages where we have complications is we don't understand each other's tolerance sometimes. Uh, you ever see where, you know, the wife is very frugal and, and she thinks about every dollar and then the man, you know, takes on the, the notion, you know, I want that new car. I want this. I want that. And the wife is like, okay, reel it in. We got grocery <laughs> bills. We got this. We have that. But but a lot of times, and then I've seen reverse. Mm -hmm. I've seen where, you know, the wife wants to go to Saks Fifth Avenue. She wants Chanel. She wants Louis Vuitton. And the husband is like, hold on. You know what? Um, there's a 7.5 interest rate on this six-month CD, certificate of deposit. Let's go get that because we're going to get a bump versus just having the money in mm -hmm. in the savings account so i say that because understanding you know your spouse your risk tolerance it makes you able to manage your assets mm -hmm. a little bit better because at the end of the day when you have assets and and you're a business owner you're planning for the future mm -hmm. at some point we have to leverage those assets and, and make it into liquidity. So if you want to grow, you need capital to grow. So mm -hmm. if you have business insurance and if you did the right net worth sheet and you have assessed what, you, what your borrowing power is, and the greater your borrowing power is, the more attractive you are to banks. And so you can say, this is what I got. This is what I'm starting with. I'm planning to grow my business now. So I'll make this real small. You got a hair company, and, and you're specialized. Again, I'm talking to my ethnicity today, glory <laughs> to God. So some of you all who are on here might not comprehend what I'm going to say. You, you have a, a, a hair business, and you understand that people have went from the horse weave to the natural hair weave. That's a little greater uh, expenditure on your line, but that's what's popular. That's what's in and so now you need another level of inventory. Look at your clientele base and say, okay, here's the people I currently have in my Rolodex that are customers that can afford me going to the next level. Now look at your assets. You go to your bank, you take them your balance sheet of your business, and you get a loan. Just because you can get a revolving line of credit, and that's what you want, because then you only have an interest on what you take out. You don't want to just go get a $100,000 loan to buy yes. inventory when you don't have enough customers to meet the inventory supply that you have in. So I'm saying all of that because this is all a part about planning for our yes. future. Mm -hmm. How are we going to get there? And by what motive do we have outside of our job? Mm -hmm. Because we all know you get a yearly review at your job. And at some point, your job is going to what we call red circle you. You're going to cap out for this level. And in order for you to get to the next level, you have to get a promotion. So if you're going to augment your income and plan for a better life for your family, then it comes from entrepreneurship. And in that entrepreneurship, it's a lot of strategic planning. It's mm -hmm. understanding financial literacy. literacy. And I'm hitting you at a 50,000 mile above sea level approach here, throwing a lot of stuff at you. But my goal today is to give you terminology, and when we come back on the next podcast, take the time to break down what the language means, what it represents, and how it's going to help you build. Mm -hmm. So, with all that being said, dear... And not only that, he said that get, you, get with somebody. You may be thinking someone you know, mm -hmm. but... Your local bank, the bank that you bank with, the bank that you got your money in that's in there every day, they have someone sitting at a desk just waiting for you to come and learn all of this stuff. You don't have to pay for it. <laughs> it's there in your local bank. Every bank has someone that can teach you all about the CDs, the mutuals, and all that stuff. That's their, Stocks, that's their purpose. Bonds. Stocks, bonds, that's their purpose. They mm -hmm. have someone just sitting there getting paid hourly waiting for people to come in for this information. And the key is they grow their bankability by growing your net worth. Yes. So they strategically look for people 
entrepreneurs mm-hmm. that they can give money to to help grow. And energy, we all just taking the time to have those meetings. Um, I'm going a little bit further. So the Bible says a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. My yes. wife talked about ensuring our children. Um, but one of the strategic goals is being transparent, mm-hmm. you know, with your children as well. Mm-hmm. Because we said this in the last podcast, the aim and goal is that each generation does better. Yes. And so I'll talk about me personally, you know, being a single parent, needing to jettison college, get a second job, um, grew up in the culture where men take care of their children and provide the best life. But I've been fortunate enough to have some financial literacy Mm -hmm. and work for companies that had really good tutorial programs, mentorship programs, allowed us Mm -hmm. to take college courses and different things. Um, And now I look at my children who have master's degrees and really understand the market, um, revolving investment accounts. And so I take what I have, rely on their intellectual prowess and Mm -hmm. say, how can we be better? But I have to be vulnerable enough to share with them what I don't have and what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so parents, I'll say to you, Planning for your future with your children, it is nothing like sitting them in a room and saying, you know, this is where mommy and daddy is at today. But we will not always be here and walk your children through those doors. Mm -hmm. Take them to the bank with you sometime when you're learning um, financial literacy and how you are going to do better as a family being transparent with your children that they don't make the same mistakes. We openly say it. Um, My wife's first business was a flower shop. We did well. She's a great floral culturist, um, phenomenal. And so we had to sell our flower shop. We came out of it. We had a very small profit, Mm -hmm. but other things suffered in our life. She talked about us both being unemployed. And it was okay because we learned a wisdom from that, how to reinvest, Mm -hmm. how to look at our strategies. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the truth. We came to this conclusion. We are our best investment in our children. And so instead of investing in everything else, we put our money into us, started other businesses, and empowered our children for the future. So... I know I'm being long-winded today, but that's what that leaving an inheritance to your children's children. Yes. It's not about making them spoiled. It's about making them accountable mm-hmm. and resourceful. And we live in a generation today where children feel, and my two boys are sitting right over there, college grads and, and great at what they do, but we live in a day-to-day where children feel privileged and mm-hmm. privileged that You are supposed to leave something for them. You are supposed to give them something. But the greatest inheritance we can leave for our children is financial literacy, a good work ethic, intelligence, education, commitment, dedication, loyalty, and the drive to want to get up and work hard and work smart. You know, because we live in this age today where the whole thing is you got to work smart and not hard. But our Bible tells us faith without works is dead. Yes. So therefore, that even in working smart, you have to have a competency and a drive yes. to exercise your brain to stay in there for long-term gain and, and long-term success. You know, money's called currency. You can't have a bundle of money and just put it under your mattress or put it in the bank. Currency means it has to flow. Yes. God gave Adam four streams. And within those streams, each stream generated something different for for his guard and his household. So when you have multiple streams of income coming in or one stream of income, you have to begin to look at how do you generate passive income. Yes. 
So I'm, I'm and you I'm and, going and you off. have to teach your children yes. because he started talking about these privileged children because there are some there are some children that they don't know they don't know what to do they all of a sudden you know there's a car accident or something and they lost their parent yes. all of a sudden they get a wealth of money from inheritances or a life insurance policy and they don't know what to do with and it and they're broke and they're broke they get the money like oh I got a windfall. They don't. They don't realize. Oh, but in order to keep this house, I still got to pay a mortgage. Mm -hmm. In order to keep the car, I still got to pay that car payment. I didn't know none of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know no, any of this was going on. And and I can say this because I had friends that I grew up with. You know, they and they were like, yeah, I I didn't know this. My parents didn't tell me this. I don't, I don't know. Right. And so you you want to talk to your children. You want it is is unfortunately, there's this old saying. I mean, in in it, well, it's, it's it's a good and a bad saying that parents like to say to their children, do what I say, not what I do. Mm -hmm. But if you don't... It is a good and bad saying. Yes, it's a good and bad saying. But if you don't teach them about what you are doing behind the scenes, right? how you paying those bills, what bills you have to pay, if you get a car, this is what needs to be fixed, that's mm -hmm. what got to be fixed, you got to make sure you take it for the oil change, you got to make sure to get your tires rotated. If you don't tell them these things, if you don't teach them these things, they are not going to know. This is good. And society expects them to just know no. it, and they can't. They're not teaching it in the schools anymore. Parents aren't teaching it at home anymore. Where are the children supposed to learn it? Yeah. Yes, your child should not know every single everything that's going on in your life and lifestyle, but they need the necessities. Mm -hmm. They need to know how to survive in this world if you're not here. You know, you talked about some really good fundamental stuff. You know, um, we as parents, mm -hmm. one of the first things we like to do, uh, because it's a high point mm -hmm. in, in our children's life, you graduate, let's try to get them a car. Mm -hmm. You know, children are so <laughs> excited to drive. Mm -hmm. But did we take the time to tell them, you got to get your oil changed, mm -hmm. you have to have insurance, mm -hmm. you have to make sure it's serviced on time, mm -hmm. and then do we talk to them, to them about the value of the car? Mm -hmm. um, it's important to have these value conversations, I believe, with our children, Um Segwaying into something else before we close out this segment because this 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 can go on for a really long, for a long time. time. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about you know financial literacy, a little bit about risk tolerance, risk management, but but in the midst of the literacy, you can never feel illiterate to learn. Um, mm -hmm. When you're dealing with numbers, I know people who can't read sentences, but they are whizzes at numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to the household of faith today because we are a people that are believing God for exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. Mm -hmm. So God blesses our prayer and, and he begins to take us into overflow. What I love about God, he's omniscient. Mm -hmm. So let me back up and park this for a minute. He's never going to give us more than what we can handle. And if he does, by grace, and if we don't maximize what he's given us, we'll be just like the parable with the talent. And we know that's a kingdom parable. Uh, but he will take from you and give to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So always understanding when we are under the control and the auspices of God, that we're believing exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think, that means your planning for your future has always have to exhaust what you need into the next generation. My wife said something that stuck in my mind, or the former generation. Mm -hmm. I'll share this personally. Once I got to be 14 years of age and, and had a job and steady income, I would told my parents, you don't need to clothe me. You don't need to pay for my class trips no more. I have a job now. And, and that was my mantra with them. And 
They still fed me. They still kept the roof over their head. But there was things that I knew I could do for myself. Um, my dad told me, I'm not growing boys, I'm growing men. And so that's what men do. They, pro they took care of their self and they provided for the household. As I got older in life in 1920, um, dad still had a great job, had just sold his business at that point. But I looked at my, my parents and said, okay, they're vibrant today, my dad. My mom was sickly, but they're going to get older, and how can I help them? So I start looking at my ledger, wrote everything down, and how could I fit them in the budget? And I'm not telling you to do that, but when you begin to think outside of what you need, God will start giving you the exceeding and the abundantly above all you could ask or think. Mm -hmm. Because when he realized you're going to sow and give more strategically to help other people, he will give you more seed and grant you more. And I tell people all the time, when there is not a philanthropic component to your ledger, when you're only thinking about you, and I know you're saying, I'm not there yet, Bishop, I'm not there yet. But but you're doing that when you pay your tithes and give your offering. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just saying, as you begin to maximize your budget, begin to budget in. Here's what I need. Here's how I want to bless my children. Here's mm -hmm. how I want to help provide for my parents. And watch God begin to expand your thinking, expand your ability to sow. We're going to say invest, not mm -hmm. sow, invest. But strategically start critiquing your spending habits. Because mm -hmm. when you start trying to provide for other people, it will make you minimize your spending for things that you don't need. Mm -hmm. I was just in a situation a few weeks ago. Being transparent today, I was thinking about my car's got some age to it. It still runs pretty good. Do I want to go get a new car? And, you know, I consult with my people around me. Yeah, you know, Dad, you deserve a new car if you want to get one. That one's a 2016. It looks good. It runs good. It's low miles. And so did the deal, was going to get the car. And I said, you know what? Do I really need a new car? I said, is my kids where I want them to be? Is, is my mom, my parents are deceased, but we, my mother-in-law's mom to me, is there somebody I can help a little bit more? Or is there something I could invest a little bit better? Not that I have a whole lot. People think I got a lot. I'm rich in mercy. I'm rich in grace. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I'm a good steward over <laughs> what I have. I, I tell you, I try to get Amen. two cents out of every penny if I can. <laughs> Glory to God. Um, but I share that with you. You will learn and God will begin to speak to you and you will make changes um, in your spending patterns and begin to look for sources to generate income to help you get where you're going. Mm -hmm. There are closing remarks. No, I'm good. You good? Yep. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. I can tell you we were on topic, off topic, and all over the topic because these are things that I just love. And we're real people, so we're not sharing with you from the lens of this is what we read in the book, this is what we learned in school. We're giving you true life practical and tactical experience. This is what we've been through. Mm -hmm. This is what we do every day today in navigating our finances, you know, mm -hmm. we've been there. You know the old saying, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we still find ourselves, and I don't care who you are, you will find where you have the ebb and flows, the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But the key is being consistent in your planning. You know, don't let anything take you off of, here's where I'm going, here's the plan, and here is the direction we're going in. Mm -hmm. And if you can stay true to that and let God put faith to your works and works in your faith, there is no limit to where God is going to take you. We're excited to share this today. Um, please 
Send us your views. Send us your thoughts. Give us some topics that you would like to hear us talk about. And we are, as I said, we're going to take one segment that's just going to deal with finances. We're going to put it on the big screen. We're going to give you some stuff that you can just go back and understand the language that we can get you in the right frequency that your currency will begin to flow for you. So I praise God for you joining in. Mm -hmm. Heaven smile upon you until you view us again. Drop us a line. Send us an email. Send us something you want to hear us talk about. We're trying to build our ministry by utilizing this podcast. We always say one family at a time. And I'll tell you, my children will tell you, our church will tell you, People in our life feel like they're the only people in our life because we believe that when you sow into a family and you give this type of information, it helps them build. And if we can help you be better next month than you are today, then we've done our job. We have sowed a good seed. Mm -hmm. We've been servants to humanity. And that is our goal today is to be servants and give people everything that the Lord has given to us. We have a couple guests coming on uh, in our next series of podcasts that will be coming up. We have financial planners coming on. We have a dear brother who I love, Minister Alton Walker, who's going to come on and talk to you about the intricacies of insurance. For all of our business owners, I'm going to leave you with this note. If you don't have key man insurance, on your business today, if you are the CEO, if you are the one who have started the company, I don't care how big or how small it is. If you are the majority generator of the income in your business, you can't afford not to have key man insurance. Because if you go down, even for my pastors, you are the one that people come to hear on Sundays. You are the one that has the largest following. If you do not have key man insurance on your ministry and something goes wrong, you'll put your people at a deficit. So these are just things we want to share with you, help you be better at what you're doing, and let us grow the kingdom of God in the earth. We love you. Heaven smile upon you. Until we meet again, be fruitful, multiply in Jesus' name.